In this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a Django app to AWS using Docker while also enabling HTTPS. So this is a topic that I get asked all the time. We have another video on our channel that shows you how to deploy a Django app to AWS using Docker and Docker Compose. However, people always say, how do you add HTTPS to that deployment because HTTPS is very important now. It's really important to keep your application secure because you don't want to be sending data over clear text communication. You want to make sure that everything is encrypted where possible. So HTTPS is really a must have when it comes to deploying any application that you're going to make accessible over the web. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to deploy a Django application to an AWS server using Docker and Docker Compose, and also how to add HTTPS using the free Let's Encrypt service. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to deploy a Django app to EC2 instance on AWS, and we're going to be enabling HTTPS using CertBot. And then we're going to add a domain name for our application through Route 53. So in order to have an SSL certificate, you need to have a domain name for that certificate. So we have to register one of them using the AWS Route 53 service. So before you get started, you need to make sure you have Docker installed on your system because we're going to be using Docker a lot. You need to have it installed and set up and ready to go. You also want to make sure you have an AWS account. So if you don't already have an AWS account, then head over, sign up for the AWS free tier. Most of the services that we're using in this video should be available under the free tier. So in theory, it shouldn't cost you anything except potentially a domain name as they often cost about $10 a year to register. However, you need to take responsibility for your own costs and keep an eye on the cost on your account. You're also going to need to have a code editor. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So I recommend using Visual Studio Code as well if you want the steps to be as similar as possible. However, you're also free to use whatever code editor you prefer. So here's a diagram of the architecture that we're going to be creating in this video. So what we're going to have is three services that are running using Docker Compose. One called Nginx, which is our proxy. And then we're going to have the CertBot service, which is going to be used to retrieve our certificates. And then we'll have our Django app running in the Django service. The way that HTTPS is going to work is CertBot is going to retrieve them from Let's Encrypt. And the way it does that is it sets up what's called a challenge. So Let's Encrypt provides a challenge that CertBot can then share with our web server in order to authenticate the request to get the certificate. So what happens is Let's Encrypt will send the challenge to CertBot. We're then going to put that challenge in a volume that's set up using Docker Compose, and we're going to put it in the CertBot web volume. That volume will then make that challenge available to our Nginx web server so it can then serve it on the web via the domain name that we've set up. This allows Let's Encrypt to authenticate. Once it's confirmed that we are a legitimate web service and we're serving their challenge, then it will generate a certificate for us. So CertBot will be able to retrieve a certificate, which will then be stored in the CertBot certs volume which will then also be made available to our Nginx service. So then Nginx can now serve the application using HTTPS. The other volume that we have here is called proxy DH params, and this is going to be used to store our Diffie-Hellman params that are generated the first time we run our Nginx service. Diffie-Hellman params are basically just a way to strengthen the encryption and it takes some time to generate these params when you first run your server. So we're gonna store them in a volume so that we don't need to generate them again every time we restart the service because that can introduce unnecessary delays. We're just gonna generate the first time we deploy and then we're gonna store it in a volume and then we can reuse them later on. Once the HTTPS is all set up, we can then run our Nginx reverse proxy which will send requests to our Django app, but first it will terminate them via HTTPS. So you should be able to access the web domain for your application using the HTTPS prefix, and then you should see a valid certificate in the browser. So there's gonna be three main stages to our deployment. The first is getting the certificates, and this is gonna happen the first time you run the service. So it's kind of a one-time process that happens the first time you deploy your application to a server. And then after we've set up our certificates the first time, we can begin serving HTTPS on our web server. And this is gonna be the main running state of our application. And then periodically, we're gonna be 
updating the certificates with a renewed certificate. So Let's Encrypt issues certificates for a domain for a maximum of three months. So before that three months expires, we need to run the certbot renew command, which will be used to generate a new certificate and renew them so that you can have it for another three months. And we'll be setting that up using an automated cron job. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to find future videos that we post on the channel. We also have lots of courses where we go into more detail about topics like DevOps deployment, Django REST framework and test driven development. So please check them out. You can find them on our website or you can find them in the description of this video if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating our project. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a new project on GitHub. So go over to your GitHub page and we're gonna create a new repository. I'm gonna call this Django-HTTPS and in the description, Django deployed with HTTPS. I'm gonna make it a private repository. You can of course make it private or public. Public means anyone can access it on the internet. We're gonna be able to deploy using a deploy key. So if, even if you set it as private, you'll still be able to access it and download it to the server that we're deploying to. We'll add a readme and we're gonna add the Python git ignore and I'm gonna leave the license black. Okay, so let's click create repository. Now we're gonna go ahead and clone this repository to our local system. So I'm gonna move into my workspace here. clone that and then let's open it using Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that's done, we can start adding the code for our project. The first step is to just set up a basic Django project using Docker and Docker Compose. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna do this using my favorite approach of doing everything in Docker and Docker Compose. So let's create a new file called requirements.txt and then we're going to add two requirements here. So we're gonna add Django equals equals 4.0.5 and then uwizgi equals equals 2.0.20. Now I recommend using the exact versions that I specify here just to make sure that the steps that you're gonna be following in this video are all gonna be the same. You can always upgrade the version after the video if you want. Okay, so let's save the requirements.txt. And now we're gonna create a Docker file for our application. So this is the Docker file that we're gonna use, one for our local development server, and secondly, to actually deploy and run our application. It's gonna be what runs our Django app. So let's type from Python colon 3.10 hyphen Alpine 3.16. And then env Python unbuffered one. I'll talk through what each of these lines do at the end after we've typed it all out. And then copy requirements.txt to forward slash requirements.txt. And then run apk add hyphen hyphen upgrade hyphen hyphen no cache build base. Oops, that should be build hyphen base. And then Linux hyphen headers and then ampersand ampersand backslash pip install hyphen hyphen upgrade pip hyphen, uh, ampersand ampersand backslash and then pip install hyphen r forward slash requirements.txt. Then we'll do copy app forward slash to forward slash app and then work the forward slash app and then run add user hyphen hyphen disabled hyphen password hyphen hyphen no create home Django then user Django and then CMD uwizgi hyphen hyphen socket and then colon 9000 that's the port number hyphen hyphen workers for and then hyphen hyphen master, hyphen hyphen enabled threads, hyphen hyphen module, and then app.wsgi. Okay, so let's talk through what this does. We'll save the file first. So the first line, line one is just saying we're gonna base from Python 3.10 
Alpine image. So I've specified the versions here just to make sure that as you're following the steps, they're all gonna be the same using the same versions that I used in this video because new versions may introduce some changes. I recommend using the exact pinned versions that I specify so then you can guarantee that all the steps should be the same and then you can always upgrade at the end. Then we have this env python unbuffered and this just tells python that we want to not buffer the output so basically it just prints all of the outputs that come from our python application directly to the console this is the recommendation if you look at the docker documentation for using python and it just makes sure that the outputs are reliable then we're doing copy requirements.txt to requirements.txt this just copies our requirements.txt file that we created in our project to forward slash requirements.txt in the docker image then we're running apk add which is kind of like yum or apt-get if you're using centos or ubuntu we're using alpine and they have the alpine package manager which is called apk so we're doing apk add and then we're doing upgrade so we're going to upgrade our dependencies we're going to say no cache because we don't want to store the cache in the docker image we want to keep the docker image as lightweight as possible then we're doing build base and Linux headers. So these are the two packages that need to be installed in order for us to install Django and UWSGI. Then we're doing pip install upgrade pip. And what this does is just upgrade to pip so we can get rid of some annoying warning messages that we get. And then we're doing pip install hyphen r and then the requirements. So it just says install all of the requirements from the requirements file at this location. Then we're copying the app directory to forward slash app. We haven't created this directory yet, but we're gonna do it in a moment. This is where our app is gonna be stored. So it's where we're gonna store our Django project and all of our Django code. Then we're switching the default work directory to forward slash app with this line on line 11. And then we're adding a user that we can use to run our Django application. And we're just calling the user Django because we don't really wanna run it in root user mode. Then we switch to this user Django and then we run the uwsgi command for starting the service. So uwsgi on socket 9000, so it's port 9000 we're running on. And then four workers, so that's four worker threads that we have on our application. And then we want it to run in master, which means run it in the foreground. So we don't want to run uwsgi in the background because this is going to be deployed as a Docker container. So the best practice is always to run them in the foreground. So you get all of the logs and the outputs from that application directly to Docker. We're enabling threads, just in case you wanna have multi-threading in your Django app. And then we are setting the module to app.wsgi, which is something that is gonna be auto-created by Django in a moment. Okay, so make sure you've saved that file. The next step is to create a Docker Compose configuration here. So we'll do docker-compose.yaml, YML. And then we're gonna type version colon 3.9 and then services app colon build colon context colon dot and then command colon sh hyphen c python manage.py run server 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 colon 8000 and then volumes colon hyphen dot forward slash app colon dot forward slash app and then ports colon hyphen 8000 to 8000. Okay, so save the file. This is a Docker Compose configuration. And this is actually the configuration we're gonna use for our development server. So this isn't what we're gonna be using for our deployment. It's just for development in order to set up and develop our application locally. We're setting up one single service here called app, and we're setting the build context to dot, which just means set it to this current directory that the docker compose configuration is in which means it will use our docker file that we have here in the root of the project then we're setting the command so this will override the default command that we add to our docker file which would run in uwsgi we don't want it to run in uwsgi when we run it locally we want it to run using the django management server so the way that we do that is we run python manage.py run server and then on 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 port 8000. Then we're setting up a volume from the app directory that we're gonna create in a moment to forward slash app on the container. This just means that all of the code that we change in our project 
gets automatically synchronized with our running container. So we don't need to manually rebuild every single time. Then we're mapping port 8000 on our host to port 8000 on the container, which will allow us to access the running web server. Okay, now that's done, we can go ahead and create our project. So what we need to do first is create a new empty directory here called app. Otherwise, when we get to this line, it's gonna fail saying app doesn't exist. So that's just why we need to create an empty directory first. Then we can open up the terminal, change to the location. If you're on Windows, you're gonna use command prompt or maybe git bash or whatever it is you like to use for your command line interfaces. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna type docker hyphen compose run hyphen hyphen rm app sh hyphen c django hyphen admin start project app dot. Make sure there's a space before the app and dot and then close the quotes. So what this does is it runs docker compose, which will use our default docker compose.yaml file that we just created. We're passing rm, which means remove this container once it's run, because we only want it to run once, we don't want it to be lingering around on our system forever. So we're going to pass in rm to remove it. We're specifying the app service that matches app in our docker compose file. And then this is the command here. So it's sh hyphen c, which says run a shell command and we are running django admin start project app full stop so that just means run django admin start a project called app and the full stop means create that app inside the current directory so don't create a new directory create create it in the current directory that we're working from so hit enter what's going to happen now is it is going to build our container so first it needs to download the dependencies from docker hub then it is going to run through all of the steps in our Docker file to build our image. And then Docker Compose is gonna run the command that we want using that image. So it's gonna run a container from that image and this should create a new Django project for us. So we're gonna wait for that to finish and then we'll continue. Okay, brilliant, so the command ran, let's see what happened here. So if we open up our projects, you can see inside app, we now have a new Django project. So here's the Django project, it's created a new template for our project. So we can test this now by just doing docker compose up and then open up your browser and just head over to 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. If you see this page, then it's all running correctly and you have started your project properly. If you don't see this page, then something must be wrong. So go back, see if there's any errors or try and restart the server, something like that. Okay, great. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna commit this to git. So git add dot git commit hyphen am added new Django project. Now the next step is to create an app inside this project. So we can do that by typing docker compose run hyphen hyphen rm app sh hyphen c python manage.py start app home. And this is gonna create a new app. It's very similar to the command we ran previously to create the project, except this time we're using the manage.py script that's created in our project and we're calling start app home. So this will create a new app in our project called home. And we're gonna use this to put some basic code that we can just deploy so that we can test whether we've deployed successfully. Okay, so I'm not gonna need a bunch of these files that were created by the template. So let's delete migrations. Let's delete admin. Let's delete models. And then we'll also delete tests. So normally you would leave all these files in because you would actually add content to them, but we're just creating something like a template that we can deploy just so we know we've deployed our app successfully. So we're not actually gonna be adding any tests or anything in this project. So next what we'll do is we will open up our settings.py file that's in app forward slash app settings.py and we're gonna create or add, I should say, a new app to the installed apps called home.
So this is the one we just created. And this will make sure that our templates are available and things like that. Then what we're gonna do is create a simple template. So if you open up app forward slash home, create a new directory called templates. And then inside that, create a new directory called home. And inside that, create a new file called index.html. Now we're just gonna create some test HTML here. If you look at the blog post that comes with this video, then you can just copy and paste this in if you prefer. So it's not important that you type it out. We have a blog post where it's all written out and we have the code diffs available as well if you wanna just see the differences in the code and what to paste where. So I'm just gonna do HTML head and then title Django with HTTPS. And then a body, we're gonna do h1 hello oops and then we're going to do p this is a django app with https enabled okay so that's a simple template that we can use let's save the file now let's open up views.py inside our home app and we're going to create a new view for this so we can delete that we're going to do def index request return render request home slash index.html. Okay, great. So we have that set up now. We'll add a URL. So we'll open up app forward slash urls.py. I'm gonna add a new line here, path, and just have a blank string here, views.index. And then we'll do up here from home import views. Okay, so that should be everything we need just for a very basic app that runs a simple template. Of course, there's no complex functionality here. It's just very basic. We just wanna focus on how to deploy using HTTPS. So we don't wanna to go too in depth about creating a Django app. If you head over to the browser, refresh the page, you should see this. So this is the template that we created. And of course, we haven't actually enabled HTTPS yet, even though it says it in the template. That's what we're gonna be doing in the rest of this video. Okay, so why don't you open up the terminal or the git bash or the uh, command prompt and we'll commit our changes here. We'll do git add and then git commit, added Django app. Okay, great. The next step is to set up NGINX. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated, but I will talk through each of the things that we do as we do it. So open up the project again, and we need to set up our NGINX Docker image. So there's a few different parts to this. The first step is to create a new directory called Docker, and this will be used to store our Docker files other than the one for our main project here. So we're gonna create one for Certbot and then we're gonna create one for Nginx. We're gonna start with our Nginx one, which is gonna be, it's really gonna be a reverse proxy. So we'll call it proxy. And then inside proxy, we're gonna create a new folder called Nginx. Whoops. And that's gonna be used for our template configuration files. So the first template configuration file is gonna be called default.conf.tpl. Now we call them .tpl because these aren't the actual finished configuration files. These are gonna be template files that are used to generate the configuration files based on the environment variables that we pass to our app. This will allow us to do things like override the domain name and customize it for our own domain name without having to hard code it in the project. Okay, so open up default.conf.tpl. And this is gonna be the configuration file that serves our web server just on plain HTTP. So this is what we need to use when we first start our app and we haven't yet created our certificates. The reason we need to use this is because, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we need to be able to handle a challenge file that is sent by Certbot. So Serbos provides a challenge and we need to be able to serve that challenge via plain HTTP in order to initialize our first certificates. So we'll create a simple Nginx config here. We're gonna type server and then inside the server block, we'll do listen AT, that's the plain HTTP port. And then server underscore name is gonna be dollar and then the braces here, domain 
and then www is going to be also dollar domain and this dollar domain syntax is the template syntax that we're going to use and we're going to be replacing these these variables here with environment variables that we set in our container okay so next what we need to do is set up a location block so we'll do location forward slash dot well hyphen known forward slash acme forward slash challenge forward slash this is the location where let's encrypt expects to find the challenge file in order to complete our authentication so we need to serve this location and make it accessible on port 80 and we need to serve it from root forward slash vol slash www forward slash and then don't forget the semicolon at the end this will be mapped to a volume that we can then share with certbot so it can put the file there and then nginx can access the file from that volume okay the next thing we're going to do is add another location block here that's just location forward slash so the way that it works is it handles these location blocks in order so it first sees if the url matches this location block if it does then it will serve it from vol slash root slash www now we need to define what happens if the url doesn't match this so essentially everything else that isn't well known acme challenge we just want to forward to https which will help us for when we actually have our https set up so we'll do that by typing return 301 https colon slash slash and then host and then the request uri this is the recommended way to forward everything from http to https using nginx so that's everything for the default.conf.tpl file so save that file and now the next step is to create the same file but for https so this will be the file that's used when we first start the server before we have the certificate and then we're going to create a second file that's used when we do have a certificate the reason why we need two separate files is if you have the https configuration in this file then nginx will crash because the certificates that it needs to serve https will not be accessible so that's why we need to create two separate files for this so we're going to copy the contents of this file so keep the contents in the clipboard open up the browser here and we're going to add a new file here under the nginx subdirectory we're going to call it default-ssl.conf.tpl and then paste the beginning of the file in so this is just the same as the first one and the reason we copy this in is just because we're going to run one file or the other so we still want to serve http without the s for the acme challenge here and we also want to handle the redirect so if someone comes to our website using http we're going to redirect them to https but we also want to add some more things here to the bottom so we're going to add a second block a second server block it's going to be called server and this one is going to do listen 443 ssl so that's listen on port 443 which is the default port for https and we are going to say ssl here so we want to enable ssl server underscore name is going to be the same as above so domain and then www.domain and then we're going to have ssl underscore certificate forward slash etc slash let's encrypt forward slash live forward slash domain forward slash full chain dot pm and then ssl underscore certificate underscore key forward slash etc slash let's encrypt slash live slash and then domain forward slash priv key dot pm and then include forward slash etc slash nginx slash options hyphen ssl hyphen nginx.conf and as i did before i'll walk through these line by line after we've created it and then ssh underscore dh param forward slash vol slash proxy slash ssl hyphen dh params dot pem and then add underscore header not user header strict transport security max age equals 
315360000 include sub oops include subdomains always okay and then we're going to do location forward slash static alias slash vol slash static and then location forward slash uwisgi pass app host and then app port include forward slash etc slash nginx slash uwisgi params and then client max body size 10m okay so save the file i'm going to talk through it line by line I'm going to skip this first block because we already covered that. It's the same as the previous file that we created. We have a new server block here and we're saying listen on port 443, which is HTTPS. We're sending the server name to the domain name that's going to be configured via environment variables. Then we're configuring the SSL certificate here. So we are setting SSL certificate to etc slash let's encrypt slash live slash the domain name and then fullchain.pdm. This will be the volume that we map the certificates to from our certbot. So certbot is going to put the uh, files here under live slash domain uh, slash priv key. And we're going to have this mapped to a volume called etc slash let's encrypt. So it gets created by certbot, put there, and then it should be accessible to Nginx from that location via the volume. And this is just the certificate and the certificate key. It's the basic configuration that you need in order to serve HTTPS on any web server. Then we're doing the include nginx options ssl.conf here. So we're going to be adding this in a minute. This is a configuration file that I took from the certbot GitHub page. And it basically includes the basic configuration that you need for an Nginx server. So it's the basic configuration that you need in order to serve a certbot generated certificate using Nginx. So we're going to create that in a moment. The next one is this SSL DH param. So this is the Diffie-Hellman params that I mentioned previously. And all it is is a way to strengthen the encryption. So it generates a set of parameters and it takes some time to do this the first time that we do it. So that's why we're gonna also map this to a volume that will store under forward slash vol slash proxy. Then we're adding this header here. So what this is, is it just adds a HTTP header to the requests that tells the browser to remember that this web domain should be accessed via HTTPS. It's just recommended for security so that the browser doesn't keep trying to access you using HTTP. This will basically say set a header in the browser so that every time you visit this domain, always use HTTPS, which is what you want whenever you have an application. Then we're serving the location block for static here. This isn't really something we're going to cover in this video because this is more about Django static files. We have different videos on our YouTube channel and on our website that explain how you can set up and serve Django static files you're using a Docker deployment. Then we have this final location block here. So this says if we haven't matched any of the previous location blocks, then forward the request using uwisgi pass and forward it to our basically our Django application. So we are forwarding it to app slash app. So we're forwarding it to uh, app host, app port. These are things that we'll configure via the environment variables when we run our application. And then we're including these uwisgi params, which again are just a configuration file that's provided by the uwisgi documentation in order to pass certain headers over. So we're gonna be creating that in a moment. And then this client max body size just says support up to 10 meg in the body size. So this is useful if you need to upload images or something to the Django application. Okay, so let's save the file here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to be adding our options SSL certificate. So if we create a new file here inside Nginx, we're gonna call it options, oops, options hyphen ssl hyphen nginx.conf okay and what we're going to put in this file is i'll show you how to retrieve it you can go ahead and get it from the description of the video or the blog post that we have in this video but i'll show you where you can find it in case you ever want to find configuration files like this again so if you go to github certbot 
I'll just search that and then it should take us to the CertBot GitHub page. Okay, we're gonna choose CertBot and then we're gonna choose the version that we're using. So we are using 1.28.0. So I'm gonna choose that and this is just so that your configuration file matches the version that you're using in Docker. And then what we'll do is we'll navigate to CertBot Nginx should be in here somewhere, here we go. And then internal, and then, sorry, servo engine X, then servo engine X again, and then internal, and then TLS configs, and then this uh, options SSL engine X here. Okay, so you just copy the contents of this file and we'll head and paste it in here. Okay, so we can save that. That's all we need to do for this file. Now we need to add the uwsgi params. So if we go ahead and create a new file here called uwsgi underscore params. Okay, so uwsgi params is a file that we need in order to send the right headers to our uwsgi service from nginx. You can find it on the official documentation for uwsgi. So if you just search for uwsgi docs, And then we'll just choose a uwsgi project and there should be a page here for nginx so nginx support and then in here we should see the uwsgi params file so we can just copy the contents of that file open up our visual studio code and paste it in okay so save the file and now let's move on to the next step okay the next step is to create a run script in order to run our nginx proxy so we're gonna create that inside docker slash proxy and we're gonna create a file called run.sh. And this is gonna be a bash script that we're gonna to use to run our proxy. But first we're gonna do some checks to check for our SSL certificates and to also generate our DH params. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna add a shebang here at the top, bin slash bash, and then set hyphen E and then echo checking for dhparams.pem if, and then this syntax here for an if statement, hyphen f, uh, and then in quotes, vol slash proxy slash ssl hyphen dhparams.pem, and then we're going to close the square bracket here and then type then, so this is like an if then block in bash, then fi, and then echo dh params.pem does not exist. Oops, that should all be in quotes. Does not exist, creating it. Open ssl dh param hyphen out forward slash vol slash proxy slash ssl hyphen dh params.pem 2048. Okay, so this first part of the script here, it will check if dhparams exists. So it does this check here in this if block. So if this file exists, or this not symbol here means if it does not exist. So if this file does not exist, then run this code here. And we're just gonna echo a message to the screen so we know what it's doing. And then we'll run openSSL dhparam out. And that means put the output of the dhparams in this location. So forward slash vol slash proxy slash SSL DH params dot pem. And we're gonna use 2048 bits. So once this is done the first time, then this should no longer pass and it should not run this code again. And this volume should also map the configuration here. So if we go over to our open SSL configuration, actually not open SSL, it's the default SSL configuration. And we do control find you see that it should match the name here. So this will tell you if you've got any typos or anything like that. Okay, so back to the run script. So that's the first stage. The next stage is to create the appropriate configuration file for the mode that we wanna run our proxy in. So when we first run the proxy, we're not gonna have a certificate, so we need to run using default.conf.tpl. The second time we run it, we should have the certificate. So then we run it using default ssl.conf.tpl. And one other thing that caught me out as well is that 
These parameters here, so this host and request URI, these are actually parameters that are set by Nginx. However, our templating command removes them if they don't exist as environment variables. So we need to kind of put a workaround here to make sure that host and request URI remain inside the finished output file after we run it through our env substitute command. So I'll show you how to do that now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a comment here just so we know what we're doing. Avoid replacing these with env subst. We'll do export host equals backslash dollar sign host. Export request underscore URI equals backslash dollar sign request underscore URI. So all this does is it exports two string variables with the content that we want to remain inside these values here. So host here will get replaced, but it will get replaced with a string of the same name. And the same for request URI. It should be request URI, not URL. Okay, so now we'll do echo checking for fullchain.pem. So fullchain.pem is the file that will exist when our certificates have already been set up. So if they exist, then we already have SSL. If they do not exist, then we don't have SSL. So we'll do if not hyphen F etc slash let's encrypt slash live slash domain, or it should be caps there, domain, forward slash full chain dot pem and then close this off here, then, and we will do echo, no SSL cert, enabling HTTP only, and we'll do env substitute, so env subst, which is short for env environment variable substitute, and then the um, arrow in here, forward slash etc slash nginx slash default.conf.tpl and then the output to forward slash etc slash nginx slash conf.d forward slash default.conf. Okay, and then we'll do else. And in the else bot, we'll do echo SSL so exists enabling HTTPS and then env substitute etc slash nginx slash default hyphen ssl.conf.tpl and then output forward slash etc slash nginx slash conf.d forward slash default.conf and then we just do the fi here at the end to end the if block and finally we run nginx hyphen g daemon uh, make sure i spell this right d-a-e-m-o-n off and then close the um semicolon great so let's save the file so what we're doing here is we're checking if our full chain.pem exists when we first run it we expect it not to exist so when we first run our service and we don't have a certificate it won't exist we will then run using our default.conf.tpl so that was this first configuration that we created here that doesn't have the ssl configuration and then the second time we run it after the certificate's been generated and we've passed the authentication challenge we can then enable HTTPS. So then we're gonna use this default hyphen SSL.conf.tpl, which is the template that has all of the SSL configuration here. So this will be what we run most of the time. We're only gonna need this bit the first time we run our application and get the certificate. Okay, and then we have our Nginx G daemon off, and this basically starts our Nginx server, and it runs it in the foreground. So we don't want to run it as a background daemon. We want to run it in the foreground so that all of the outputs from Nginx are piped directly to our Docker logs. Okay, so that's what we need for the script. The last step of this proxy step, or the last step of adding the proxy, is to create a new Docker files. So inside Docker slash proxy, I'm gonna create a new file called Docker file. And then we're gonna create a Docker file for our proxy. So we're gonna do from nginx colon 1.23.0 hyphen alpine. And then copy dot forward slash nginx forward slash and then the asterisk here 
forward slash etc slash nginx. And then copy dot forward slash run dot sh forward slash run dot sh. And then env app underscore host equals app env app underscore port equals 9000. And then run apk add hyphen hyphen no hyphen cache open SSL bash and then run chmod hyphen x forward slash run dot sh and then volume forward slash vol slash static and volume forward slash vol slash www and then cmd forward slash run dot sh. Okay, so save the file. What we're doing here is we're creating a new Docker image based off Nginx version 1.23. And then we are copying our config. So dot Nginx forward slash asterisk copies everything inside this directory here into forward slash etc slash Nginx. So we get all of these configs available inside our Nginx image. Then we're also copying the run script and because we didn't put it inside Nginx, because it's not an Nginx config, we need to specify it specifically. So we say dot forward slash run dot sh, this file here, copy in at forward slash run dot sh on the image. Then we specify these two env values. So these are just default environment variable values that we can override if we want to. So the default is going to be what works most of the time but we can override this in the future if we want to. Then we're running apk add no cache and we're installing open SSL and bash, which are things that are needed for our script. And then we're doing chmod, which is shmod, plus x on forward slash run dot sh, which just makes sure that our run script is executable. So the plus x means add executable permissions to the run script. Then we're specifying these two volumes here. So static will be used for static files if we need. And then www will be used to serve the certbot challenge from our certbot volume. Then we're specifying the default command to run.sh. Okay, so that's everything we need to do for our Docker file. We can check that this builds by doing cd docker slash proxy docker build and then dot here. And this will just check that we've created our Docker file okay and that it's building. Okay, so that's everything for the proxy. Next, we need to add our certbot image. So we're gonna create a new image here inside certbot. So we're gonna do docker slash certbot and then we're going to create our first certify-init.sh file. So this is going to be a script that we use to certify the first time we run our service. So in the script, we're going to type a shebang as bin slash sh. And then wait for proxy to be available, then gets the first certificate set hyphen e and we're going to say until nc hyphen z proxy 80 colon do and then done echo waiting for proxy dot 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 sleep 5s and wait Okay, so what this script needs to do is we need to first wait for the proxy to be available. So when you start services using Docker Compose, you can specify that one service depends on another, which means it will wait for one service to start before the other starts. However, it doesn't guarantee that the application running in that service has had time to start. It only guarantees that the service itself has started. So it's kind of like guaranteeing turning on a computer, but not guaranteeing that you've loaded up your web browser on the computer. So that's essentially what's happening. 
we need to make sure that our nginx server is actually up and running and that it's done everything like generate the dh params and things like that that take some time the first time so we need to wait until that happens and the way that we do that is we use this netcat command and netcat just lets you check to see whether a tcp port is accessible so you could do that by typing until nc hyphen z proxy is the name of the container that we're going to be checking for we're going to do port 80 and then we're going to do and we're just going to echo which is just output a message saying waiting for proxy and then sleep for five seconds wait and then try again so keep doing this until the proxy is available so when the proxy is available we can then do echo getting certificate and then we'll do cert bot cert only backslash hyphen hyphen web root backslash hyphen hyphen web root path vol or forward slash vol slash www forward slash and then hyphen hyphen or just one hyphen this time d and then here we're going to do domain backslash actually there's no squiggly brackets around this one because we're just inserting it directly in the script and then hyphen hyphen email email backslash hyphen hyphen rsa hyphen key hyphen size 4096 backslash hyphen hyphen agree tos backslash hyphen hyphen non interactive okay so save the file there's a few things here so i'll just talk us through it so what we're doing is we're waiting for the proxy and then we're running certbot cert only so with Certbot, it's kind of designed to actually set up and do all the configuration for you on Nginx. We're not doing that because we want to run it in Docker and I want it to kind of be reproducible and I want it to run as a Docker service alongside our existing services. So in order to do that, you need to provide the cert only flag to the command. So cert only tells Certbot that we don't want it to actually set up our Nginx service for us because that wouldn't work because we're not running it straight on a server. We're running it in a separate Docker service. What we wanted to do is just generate a certificate for us. And then we'll do the configuration of that certificate ourselves, which we've already done through volumes and through our Nginx configuration. So we're saying cert only, get the certificate only. We want the web root method of authentication. There's different ways that you can do the challenge. The web root is the one that works best for this type of deployment. And then we're specifying the web root path as forward slash vol slash www. So this says the web root of our server that we're going to use to serve the authentication challenge is at forward slash vol slash www. And that's where it's going to put the challenge. Then we specify hyphen D and the domain name. So whenever you have a certificate, it has to be created for a specific domain name. So we're giving it the domain name that we want to create the certificate for. Then we specify the email, which is just a requirement of using Certbot. You need to specify a valid email address. So this should be your own email address. We're going to pass these in as variables when we run the service. So that's why we're using the dollar sign email here. Then we're doing RSA key size. So 4096 is the recommended key size for keys when you're using Certbot. And then we do agree TOS, which means we agree to the Certbot terms of service that you can read on their website. Then we specify non-interactive and this just means that we're not doing this process manually so we can't enter any inputs when we deploy our application so if it asks any questions like hit yes if you want to continue then it wouldn't work so we specify non-interactive to tell it we just wanted to do the job that we specify based on everything that we pass in here don't ask any questions when we start the service okay so now that we've got this script here we just need to create a little docker file for our sub bot so inside docker slash certbot docker file, we're going to type from certbot slash certbot and then v1.27.0 and then copy certify hyphen init dot sh forward slash opt and then run chmod plus x forward slash opt slash certify hyphen init sh and then entry point we're going to set to a blank uh, list here which is basically just override the entry point and then cmd certbot 
and then renew. So the default will be renew, and the reason we set that as default is because that's what we'll be doing after we deploy our service. 99% of the usage of this doc image will be for renewals. We only ever need to generate using our certificate uh, generation script here. We only need to do that one time ever, basically, for a deployment. Okay, so save the file. So what we're doing here is we're basing from our existing certbot Docker image that's available for free on Docker Hub. And this is the official image for certbot. Then we're copying our script, certify init.sh, to forward slash opt, which is like the directory for storing optional scripts on a service. So we're doing run chmod plus x to make this script executable. And we override the entry point and then we specify the default command here. Okay, so now we've added all of the different components that we need in order to deploy and use HTTPS. The next step is to configure our Django app and also create a Docker Compose configuration specifically for our deployment. So we'll start by configuring our Django app. So what we need to do, I'm just gonna close off some of these tabs here, and then I'm gonna open up forward slash app slash app slash settings.py. And then at the top, I'm just gonna add import OS. And what we wanna do is pull in the security key. You see how it says Django insecure? This is because you need to set this at runtime with a secret value that isn't hard coded in the project. So what we'll do is we'll just replace this with os.environ.get django underscore secret underscore key and then the default will be set me in prod. So this will pull an environment variable called django secret key and it will set the secret key based on that. And then if we don't specify, then the default will just be set me in prod which is used for our local development. So in our local development, we don't need to worry about having a secure key, but when we're deployed to a server that's accessible, we definitely do want to worry about that. So that's why we pull this in here. Then we're going to override this debug here. So we'll do debug equals bool int, and then os.environ.get, and we're going to get django underscore debug, and then comma zero, actually that should be inside the quote here, so comma zero. Okay, so what this does is it allows us to toggle debug mode using an environment variable. So when we're running on the local machine, we can set debug to one, which will then set debug to true. And then when we're running on a deployed service, we can leave debug mode off. And again, this is recommended, as it says in the comment here, you don't wanna leave debug mode turned on in production. Next, we're going to update the allowed host here. So we'll do allowed host equals a blank string if debug else os.environ.get django allowed hosts then dot split. And this will just allow us to specify various allowed hosts. So allowed host is a security feature and it should be set to the domain names that you want to access the application on. And it just stops anyone being able to access using the IP address or any other uh, domain name that they set up that points to your server. You want to make sure anyone accessing your server is using only the approved domain names. So if we're in debug mode, we'll just leave this as a blank string. Otherwise, we're going to pull in os.environment.get Django allowed hosts, and we're going to split that up by commas which basically says do a comma separated list. So we can specify more allowed hosts if we need. Most of the time we're just gonna be specifying one allowed host, which is the single domain name we're gonna be using for our application. It's often used if you wanna use something like www. as well as just the domain name without the www. Okay, so save the settings.py file. Now we're gonna go ahead and update our Docker Compose that we already have here. So we're just gonna update this and we're gonna add environment, oops, this should just be lowercase, environment Django underscore debug equals one. This just means that when we're in debug mode, which is what we're gonna use this Docker Compose file for, we're gonna set the application to debug mode. So this will basically be debug equals true. Okay, now we're actually gonna create our deployment Docker Compose. So the reason why we have a separate Docker Compose is because often your deployment environment is gonna be very different from your local development environment. So 
in a development environment, we just need to have the minimal services. We don't need to have the reverse proxy. We're just gonna use the Django development server. For our deployment one, we're gonna have a few more different moving parts. So we wanna keep those files separate so that we can have a separate configuration for our deployed app and our local app. So for the deployment one, we're gonna create a new file here called docker-compose.deploy.yml. And here we're gonna type version 3.9. So then we're gonna type services, colon, app, colon, build, colon, context, colon, and then, or just context, colon, dot. And then level with build, we're gonna type restart, always, and then environment, and then in here we're gonna type Django underscore secret underscore key equals Django underscore secret underscore key, and then Django underscore allowed underscore host equals domain. Okay, so this is our first app. It's very similar to the development one, except we're not overriding the command here to specify the development server. So we're gonna use the default uwiski command. And we're also setting restart always. So if it crashes, then it will automatically restart. And then we're specifying these environment variables here. So we specify Django secret key, and we set that to Django secret key. And this will allow us to define these these configuration values in a file in our project that we keep out of Git. So we can pull them from an environment variables file and we can pass them into the running containers using this syntax here. Then we're creating Django allowed host and we're passing that to, or we're passing in the value of domain. Okay, so that's the app service. Next we need the proxy service. So we do proxy and then build and this time we'll do context dot forward slash docker slash proxy because that's where the Docker file for this proxy service is. And then we'll do restart always. So again, if it crashes, it auto restarts. Depends on, and this is gonna depend on the app. So we wanna make sure the app starts before the proxy. Okay, now we're gonna define ports. And for this, we're gonna need port 80 to port 80 and port 443 to port 443. So that's port 80, which is HTTP, and port 443, that is HTTPS. And now we specify volumes. So before we add the volumes here, let's create a volumes block at the bottom of the file. So these will define like named volumes that will persist on the server unless we explicitly delete them. So we'll do volumes. First one's called certbot web, and then proxy hyphen dh params colon, and then certbot hyphen certs colon. So the colon is just because we're not gonna specify a specific path that we want to use for this. We're just gonna let Docker manage the path for us. We will then be able to access these named versions just or these named volumes just based on the name here. So we've set up the volume. Now we can go back to our proxy and we can type under volumes hyphen certbot hyphen web uh, colon forward slash vol slash www and then hyphen proxy hyphen dh params colon forward slash vol slash proxy and then hyphen certbot hyphen certs forward slash etc slash let's encrypt. Okay, and then we specify environment colon and then domain equals domain. So this sets up our proxy service. So here we have a build context of the location where our Docker file and our configurations are. And then we set restart always just as we did before. And we're saying depends on the app so that it waits for the app to, to start first. And then we're mapping the ports here. And then we are setting the volumes up. So we're saying certbot web, map this to vol slash www which is then gonna be used to serve the base of our configuration, so, or our web server. So if we go into our docker slash proxy slash nginx slash default, you can see it's serving from vol slash www. Then dh params, we're going to serve from vol slash proxy. So similarly, if we open up the proxy nginx config here and we look in our default SSL config, 
you can see that it's serving SSL DH param from vol slash proxy. So that's this volume here. Then we're getting these cert bot certs and we're putting them at etc slash let's encrypt. So again, if you look here, etc slash let's encrypt will be the volume that we're in a minute going to connect up to cert bot. Then we're setting the environment variable domain so that when we create our uh, configs here, we can populate it with the correct domain name that we want to run on that Nginx service. Okay, next, what we're going to do is create our cert bot service. So underneath the proxy, we'll type cert bot colon build colon and then context colon dot forward slash docker slash cert bot and then command colon echo skipping because most of the time when we start our service using Docker Compose up, we're just gonna skip Servbot. We only wanna run it when we're doing either renewal or we're doing a um, first time initialization. But we wanna define it as a service here so that we can easily use it through the Docker Compose command and also have access to these volumes. So we've overridden the command, then we'll do environment colon and then email equals ACME default email and then domain equals domain, and then volumes colon certbot hyphen web forward slash vol slash www, should be three w's, and then forward uh, hyphen certbot hyphen certs forward slash etc slash let's encrypt forward slash, and then depends on proxy. Okay, so this is our cert bot service that we'll use to retrieve our initial certificates and also renew certificates. We're skipping the command when we do like Docker compose up, but when we want to run it, we can specify the command directly in the command that we're using to run the service. And then we are having an environment variable here. So email equals the ACME default email that we're gonna configure. Domain equals the domain name that we're gonna configure. And then we're just mapping the volumes up here. So certbot web is used to share the challenge and certbot certs is gonna be used to store the certificates that we then give to our Nginx service. Okay, great. So now what we'll do is we'll create a basic configuration file. So we're gonna configure this using a file but what's best practice is to create a sample file that you can use to change when you deploy it. So we'll do .env.sample, and then we'll do Django secret key equals secret key one, two, three. And again, this is just a sample. These shouldn't be the actual values you use. We're gonna change these values when we deploy it to our actual server. We'll do ACME default email equals email at example.com oops, example.com, and then domain equals example.com. Okay, so you can save this file now, and then we'll go ahead and commit the changes to git. So we'll just go to the root of the project, git add, git commit am finished deployment code. Okay, and then push this to your remote repository. Great. So now what we need to do is actually create a server. So this is everything we need to do to set up our project. We should in theory be ready to deploy now, as long as there wasn't any typos or errors in the code. So we're gonna open up the Brave browser here and I'm gonna head over to AWS. So make sure you are logged into AWS with your AWS account. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add an SSH key that we can use to authenticate with the server that we create. So from the EC2 page, we're gonna open up the key pairs section and I'm gonna import my key from my local machine. So if you already have a key, then you probably already do have a key of you using GitHub and stuff. So you wanna import that key so that you can use the same key in order to authenticate. So I'm gonna click actions, import key, and I call this mark MVP for mark MacBook Pro. And then I'm gonna do cat then um, the home directory forward slash ssh slash id ed25519.pub. So you only wanna print the public key. You don't wanna print the private key, which should be kept secret on your machine at all times. So you're gonna copy the contents of the public key, and then you're just gonna paste it in here and do import key pair. 
Okay, so now this is set up, we can use this key to authenticate with our server that we create. Next, we'll go ahead and actually create the server. So let's head over to the EC2 dashboard, do launch instance, launch instance. And then we're going to do, we're gonna give the server a name. So I'm gonna call this Django HTTPS. And then I'm gonna use Amazon Linux 2, which is the default here. We're gonna leave this as 64 bit. And I'm gonna leave it on the T2 micro, which as it says is free tier eligible. So you, in theory, it should be free to use this if you're on the free tier. Um, if you want to actually deploy a real application, you probably want more memory than this. So you probably wanna up the resources here, but just bear in mind that there's a different cost associated with all the different types. And some of these instances can get quite expensive. So you just make sure that you're aware of that when you're deploying a project, because you don't wanna run up a huge bill for yourself. Again, this is just a very simple app that we're deploying. So one gig should be fine of memory and then one CPU. So I'm gonna do T2 micro, and then I'm gonna select the key pair that I just uploaded. So that's mark MVP. And then in the security group, so I'm just gonna allow SSH because that's what we use to authenticate and control the server, and then allow HTTPS and allow HTTP. And these are required because you have to have HTTP to handle the certificate challenge when you want to generate a certificate. Now, I recommend giving a bit extra storage here because we do need to pull down a few docket images to the service. I'm going to give mine 25 gig. That's usually plenty. As it says here, free tier customers get up to 30 gig. Okay, so now that this is all set up, we can click launch instance. This will go ahead and create a new server for us in AWS. Once this is created, you can click view all instances and this will take you to the instance here. So here we have Django HTTPS and here you can see it's got a public IPv4 DNS. Now, unfortunately we can't use this to actually create a certificate because it's been blacklisted by CertBot because anyone can just go ahead and create these uh, servers and get a new domain name here. So we're only gonna use this for our authentication and managing the server. Later on, we're gonna be creating a new uh, DNS entry inside Route 53 that we'll use for a real name for our server. Okay, so if you copy the public DNS here, the next step is to actually connect to the server. So open up terminal. If you're on Windows, then you probably need to use PowerShell for this because you need to use the SSH command. So we're gonna type SSH and we're gonna SSH to ec2 hyphen user at, and then the host name that we copied here. So ec2 user is the default user that is created on Amazon Linux 2. Okay, I'm gonna click yes to add the fingerprint. Okay, now I'm connected to the server. So what we'll do now is we'll do sudo yum update y, which will just update all the existing packages on the server. We'll let that finish. Okay, great, now that that's updated, we'll do sudo amazon hyphen linux hyphen extras install hyphen y docker. So this will install docker in our um, server here. So we obviously need to have docker and docker compose installed in order to be able to actually uh, run a docker on this server. So we'll install that. Okay, now that's installed, we'll do sudo systemctl enable docker.service. That just enables Docker as a service, and it will mean that it auto restarts when we restart our server. We'll do sudo systemctl start docker.service, and that just starts the service now. Then we'll type sudo usermod hyphen a, then capital G, docker ec2 user, and this will give our ec2 user the permission to be able to actually run Docker. So it adds it to the Docker group so that we can actually run Docker and run our project. Okay, now we need to install Docker Compose. So the way that I recommend doing it is follow the steps that I have in the blog post that comes with this uh, video. So basically you want to download Docker Compose directly from their GitHub. So I'm going to type the command out. It's quite long. You can actually go ahead and copy it from the blog post if you find that easier. So we'll do wget https colon slash slash 
github.com forward slash docker slash compose slash releases forward slash latest forward slash download forward slash docker hyphen compose hyphen and then this dollar and then a curved bracket here you name hyphen s which I believe is just the name of the Linux operating system and then the uname hyphen m which I think is the version of the operating system so we hit download it should download the file here so we do yeah here you can see so it's docker compose linux and then the architecture here and then we'll do sudo mv and we'll move this newly downloaded file and we'll store it in forward slash usr slash local slash bin slash docker hyphen compose and then we'll do sudo chmod plus x forward slash usr slash local slash bin slash docker compose the reason we download it like that is because I find that if you install it from the package manager, then usually you get a really out of date version. If you install it through pip, then sometimes you get issues with paths and things like that. This is just a nice clean way to install it without having to install a bunch of extra dependencies. Okay, so now we can install the final dependency, which is git, which we're gonna need to clone our project. So we'll do sudo yum install hyphen y git. Okay, so that's going to install git onto the system. Once that's done, you can type exit to disconnect from the server and then reconnect to the server. And the reason you need to do this is so that your user gets the updated permissions. It doesn't happen automatically. You need to kind of log out and log back in, which is what you do by typing exit and then reconnecting. Okay, so now that we've logged out and logged back into the server, what we're going to do is just check it's installed okay. So we'll do docker hyphen hyphen version. And you should see a Docker version here and then Docker compose hyphen hyphen version. And you should see a Docker compose version. If it says command not found, then there's probably an issue and you might need to rerun the steps that we just did to install Docker and Docker compose. Okay, now we run Docker run hello world. This will run the hello world image and just double check that everything is installed. So yeah, if this happens, then you have successfully installed Docker and you're ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to generate an SSH key on the server in order to add a deploy key to our GitHub project. So I'm going to type SSH hyphen key gen, and this should be run while you're connected to the server using the EC2 user. Hyphen T ED25519 hyphen capital C GitHub deploy key. We'll leave this default location here, and then I'm going to leave it with no passphrase. Feel free to add a passphrase for that extra layer of security. Basically, it just means that you're going to have to enter the passphrase every time you clone the code from GitHub to your server. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will output that key. So we'll do cat for uh, this tilde character forward slash dot ssh forward slash ed and then um, id underscore ed25519 dot pub. Remember to use the public key, not the private key. Copy that key there and then head over to GitHub. And you want to head over to your GitHub project where you have all of the code that you want to deploy. So go to settings and then go to deploy keys and add a new deploy key. Paste the key in and you can call it like AWS server. And all this does is allows you to add authentication from a server to your GitHub project in order to have read-only access to the code. You can give it right access here, but we don't need to do that, so I recommend not doing that. This key will just allow us to authenticate from the server to GitHub in order to claim the project. So click Add Key, and then the key gets added here. And now what we'll do is we'll actually clone the project. So I'm gonna go back to code, we're gonna do clone, or sorry, code, and then the URL for SSH. It's important to use SSH and not HTTPS, otherwise you'll be prompted for the username and password. So from the server location, you're gonna do git clone, paste the name of the git repo, clone it, type yes, and this will clone the project. Okay, so now that the project's cloned, we have the, um, we basically have all of the code on the server. We're ready to go. The only thing to do now is set up the DNS.
So as I was saying, you can't use this URL because it's blacklisted. So what you need to do is you need to go over to route 53 and in route 53, you can actually register your own domain. So you will be charged to register a domain. If you already have a domain, then you can set it up to point to a hosted zone inside AWS. So that's what I have here. If you don't already have a domain and you want to register one, then you can basically do that by following the instructions in the registered domain here. So you're gonna check the domain. So let's say example.com and it will tell you if it's available. I know that it's not available and it should give you some suggestions and things like that. And then you can follow these steps to purchase and then your domain should appear inside the uh, hosted zones here once you're done. So just bear in mind that you will be charged. It's usually like $10 a year, depending on the domain name that you want. Okay, so once we're set up here, we're gonna point this domain to our server. So I'm actually gonna add a subdomain and I'll do that by creating a record here. So add create record. I'm just gonna call this Django and I'm gonna give it a C name and the C name is gonna to point to the server name in AWS. So if you open up the EC2 tab, the C name can point to the fully qualified domain name for this Django instance here. So public IPv4 DNS. Copy that, you're gonna paste that in there and then I'm just gonna set it to one minute so that it refreshes quickly and we make any mistakes. Okay, now I'll do create record. So now the name is here. So this is the DNS name that I'm using. Yours will be a bit different because yours will be whatever your subdomain and, and primary domain is. Okay, so now that we have this domain name, we can continue with the deployment. Okay, so what we'll do next is we'll make sure we're connected to the server that we're deploying to. And we're gonna make sure that we are inside the project. So we want to do CD into the project. I'm already in it here, so I don't need to do it again. We're gonna do cp.env.sample.env. So it's just gonna copy our template here. And then I'm gonna use VI. You can also use nano. We'll use nano because it's a bit easier to use. Nano.env, and we're gonna edit these this information here. So. This, I'll just change it to real secret key and I'll make it a bit more complicated. Of course, this is all in the video, so um, I'm gonna delete this after the video. And then I'm gonna add my email address here. So again, it has to be a valid email address. I'm gonna use my own email address here. And then domain, we are going to add the domain name that we just registered. So uh, it needs to be the actual fully qualified domain name that you're using for the server. So mine is django.aws.londonapp.dev. So I'm gonna paste that in there. Okay, and now I'm going to exit and save. If you just, and then you should have the configuration created here. So if you do ls, ls hyphen la, you should see the .m file here. And this contains your configuration. Now, if you're doing a real deployment here, then you would want to copy this configuration and make sure it's backed up in a secure password manager or something like that in case you need to recreate the server. Because if the server gets compromised or you accidentally delete your server, you wanna make sure those configuration values are maintained somewhere and it's best to put them in a safe, secure storage like a password manager. Okay, so now we are ready to start our service for the first time. So the first step on the first deployment is to generate the initial certificates. And we generate the initial certificates by typing docker compose hyphen F to specify our deployment, docker compose config, docker compose dot deploy dot yaml, run hyphen hyphen rm certbot forward slash opt slash certify hyphen init dot sh. So hit enter. And what it's gonna do is, the first time you run it, it's going to download and build all of our Docker images. So basically, it does it the first time and then they're cached on the system, so the second time you run it, it should be a lot faster. But we're just gonna wait for this to finish. It's basically building all of the different services that are required for our project, and then it will go ahead and it will run our certify command in order to hopefully 
get the first certificate. And we'll see if there's any errors or issues with that in a moment. Okay, so you can see that the images are built and now it's waiting for the proxy. So what's probably happening in the background is hopefully it's generating the DH params and this can take a few minutes. So we basically just need to wait for that to happen. And then when it happens, you see it switches to get certificate. And then you can see it says account registered requesting a certificate for Django.aws.londonapp.dev. And here you can see it successfully retrieved the certificate. So we've completed the first step. We've got the certificate, which should now be stored in the volume. The next step is to run docker compose hyphen F docker compose deploy down. And the reason we run down is just to stop the HTTP server, which will currently be running using standard HTTP. We need to restart the server now that we have the certificate so that it can run in HTTPS mode. Once it's all stopped, we then type up and this will recreate our service. And you see, I've got an error here, um, enabled threads. I think I'd put a typo there. It should be enable threads, but it looks like everything else is working. So if I go back to the code and I look for that typo. So if I go to the app here, Docker file, I think the typo is here. So it should be enable threads. This will be a good opportunity to show you how to redeploy to uh, code to the server. So I've saved the file here. I've changed enable threads to enable threads, sorry, enable threads to enable threads. And now what I'm gonna do is in the project on my local machine, I'm going to go git add git commit hyphen am fixed enable threads get push and now on the server I will go control C to stop the service docker compose down and then I'll do git pull origin this should pull the changes to the local machine and then docker compose hyphen if actually you need to specify docker compose hyphen f deploy down to stop the service and then up So you need to do down and then build to rebuild our image with the new changes and then up. And we'll see if this works this time. Okay, it looks a bit more promising. Let's see, oh, we had a failure here. So no such file or directory here. Forward slash etc. So you can see here I have another typo. Apologies for all the typos. If you spotted these and already fixed them, then good for you. If not, then I'll go ahead and fix these now. So you got let's encrypt should be let's encrypt. So let's go ahead and fix that here. So we'll open up docker slash proxy slash the config here. So here's the typo here. So let's encrypt. Okay, so we'll save that. Now hopefully this can be saved here. So we will go ahead and do git add git commit fixed proxy typo get push origin and again we'll stop the service we'll do docker compose hyphen f docker compose deploy down git pull origin should pull this latest change docker compose hyphen f docker compose deploy build it's important to rebuild the image because you need to take the new changes and then we'll do up and we'll see this time if it worked. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the browser. Now this cert bot we intended to fail here, so we don't wanna run it when we're running our actual service. We're gonna run cert bot when we are actually needing to do a renewal. So we open up the browser, and now let's head over to our Django aws.londonapp.dev. And you can see here that it redirects us nicely to HTTPS. If you click on the lock symbol here, you can see the connection is secure. We have a certificate here. So it looks like everything has been deployed successfully using HTTPS. Okay, brilliant. So now what we might wanna do is we probably want to run this in the background. So the way that we can do that 
is we can stop the service by doing control C. And we'll just let that stop on its own. It should stop in a few minutes. Okay, and now if you run the same command, but you just do hyphen D at the end, it should run it in the daemon mode, which means it runs in the background. So it's not running in the foreground. Because now what we need to do is add the final step, which is to handle the auto renewal of the certificates. As I mentioned right at the beginning, the certificates that are issued by Let's Encrypt are only valid for three months. So within that three month period, we need to make sure we are checking for a renewal and renewing the certificate if it is possible. So the way we do a renewal manually is we can do docker compose hyphen f docker hyphen compose dot deploy dot yaml run hyphen hyphen rm cert bot sh hyphen c cert bot renew. And if you run this now, you should see it runs through the renewal and it says that it's not due for a renewal yet, so it's not gonna try. But what we need to do is make sure that we don't forget to run this. So you could just run this manually, but then you need to set up a reminder within every three months to make sure you're logging on and manually doing it. That's not very user friendly, it's easy to forget, very prone to error. So what we'll do is we'll create a little script that we can use to do this for us. So we'll do um, in the home directory, we'll do CD and then the tilde and then we'll just do nano and we'll create a new script called renew.sh and we'll have the shebang here at the top. You could put this in the um, code as well but I think it's just very specific for the server and in most cases you'll probably want to automate all of this using GitHub Actions or something like that anyway. We're just doing a simple demo now to show you for HTTPS. So we're just going to create the script manually directly in the root directory of the server. Well, not the root directory, the home directory of the user of the server. We'll do set hyphen E and then CD slash home slash ECT user slash Jang, um, the name of the project, which was called Django hyphen HTTPS and then forward slash user slash local slash bin slash Docker compose hyphen f docker compose dot deploy dot yaml and then run hyphen hyphen rm certbot certbot renew. Uh, the reason why we do the command like this is because we're going to run this using cron and sometimes cron doesn't always have the correct path set up. So we're going to specify the specific path where docker compose is just to make sure it runs reliably. Okay, so you can save this by doing control X and then Y, and then we'll write the changes, and then we'll do cron tab hyphen E. So we'll set this up on zero. So we'll do cron tab hyphen E, do zero dot space zero, then the two asterisks here, and then six, and then SH, and then there's the name of our script. So home slash EC2 user, slash renew.sh. So what this is, is crontab. Now, if you're not familiar with crontab, you can look up online what it is and how it works, but essentially you set a schedule here and it will run to that schedule. So this schedule says that for the zero minute at the zero hour of every day of the month, for every month on the sixth day of the week, we're gonna run this command. So essentially what that translates into is run this every Saturday at midnight. So you can actually look this up if you go to crontab.guru. It's a great resource that turns this into like a human understandable name. So it tells you exactly when it will run and it allows you to tweak it so that you can play around with it and change the schedule if you want. But essentially this runs every week and then we run it every week so that we know it will get renewed. It's kind of the recommendation is to run it every week even though we only need to renew every three months. We run it every week just to check and make sure the renewals get done early in case anything goes wrong or the service goes down or something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna save this here and that's everything we need to do. This is basically how you set up a Django deployment to an AWS server using Docker and then also set up HTTPS. 
I hope you found this useful. If you enjoyed this and you found it useful, then you might also find our other courses and other resources interesting. So feel free to check out our website or our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and like this video if you found it helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.